Hey, what's up everyone? Uh, Sick Designs here. I'm back today with another tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about spline wrapping in Cinema 4D. Now first things first, I want to say thanks to everyone that has subscribed to my channel and supported me for this uh, little over a year that I've had this channel. Uh, it's pretty awesome. I'm pretty excited about this. It um, feels great. Um, just just about six or seven six or seven months ago, I was I had just hit a thousand. That was like back in the middle of February, and uh, here it is September, uh, middle of September, and I'm already um, just top ten thousand subscribers. So uh, that's really exciting. I just want to say thanks, and I uh, really appreciate it, guys. Um, I feel very fortunate. Um, anyways, on with this tutorial. Um, today we're going to be talking about spline wrapping, and something I've never covered. And um, I feel like I should talk about it. So I actually just discovered this the other day, and I did know the spline wrap deformer was there. I had seen it before, but it's something I'd never really uh, experimented with or played with. Uh, and basically, this allows us to attach objects to a particular spline, um, and then we can animate uh, what we have on it um, and get it to follow that spline path. So this can come in handy for several things. Um, it's pretty much up to you. And as you can see there, I'm just playing with the offset and the spline wrap parameters, and the text is uh, snaking around that spline. It's following the spline, um, which is pretty cool. And that's not the only thing we can do, but uh, I'm just going to be talking about the basics today, um, and I'll let you guys do whatever you want. So let's go ahead and start fresh. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find uh, find the object that we want to um, add to our spline wrap. So for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to be using a uh, text object. So go to MoGraph, MoText if you want to do the same thing. And we're going to go to the Object tab here, and we're just going to type in um, what we want our text to say. So we'll just do something random. And I totally just failed right there. Sorry, guys. Um, highlight the text and just type in something random. So I'm just going to use the word random. Uh, we can play with the depth, um, change the font. So I'm going to use a font I like, which is Bifurc. Um, if you guys want to get that font, just search it up on Google. It's free. Um, then we'll go to caps, and we'll just go to start, fill it cap, end, fill it cap. And uh, basically, fill it caps just add a nice little bevel to the text. And uh, that looks good for right now. So. Uh, we're done there. So next thing I'm going to do is go up to create object null. And null objects are basically things just to that are used to keep things grouped together, more or less. Um, so I'm just going to call that text, and I'm going to drag and drop and make uh, mo text a child of the text null. And that's basically just going to group this, uh, group the text together. All right, so we got that in there, uh, like so. And now we're just going to go up to the deformer tab and we're going to go to spline wrap and what we're going to do is we're going to uh, click and drag this spline wrap uh, until the arrow points to the left uh, and just drag and drop it in there it doesn't need to be a child of the motex so as long as these two objects are grouped together you're good and like i said i just experimented with this a couple days ago so i'm not an expert on this but i don't believe it matters which order you put this in either it can be on top or it can be on bottom uh, anyways, there's our text and our spline wrap. So the next step here would be to create a spline that the text is going to adhere to. So we're just going to go up to the spline icon and we're just going to go to uh, pick one of these splines, uh, whichever one you choose. Um, you can use a preset spline or we can just draw it our own. So I'm just going to go to Akima and I'm going to go to our top view here and I'm just going to draw a simple little um, spawn like so and uh, if you're not getting exactly what you want uh, you can always go to your point selection tool make sure you're in point mode and then just drag um, click on these points and then drag them over and adjust them uh, to your liking so it makes editing spawns a lot easier um, doing it this way to get them you know the way you want them um, so that looks good and this is a pretty short and tight and compact spline, but that's all right. Um, so the next step here is to tell Cinema 4D which um, what spline spline wrap should use. 
So if we click on spawn wrap, you're going to see down here it's uh, waiting for us to designate the spawn. So uh, with that, our spawn is created. We're just going to go to spawn wrap and drag our spawn into that um, box there. And you're going to see it automatically forms our text to that spawn. Uh, there's a couple things we need to change because right now the mode is set to fit spawn. So the text is trying to stretch and fit to the spawn. If we just hit keep length, it's going to keep the original length of the text but adhere it to the spine. Um, and at this point in time, you can already see that we can animate this uh, along the spine. However, the text is completely upside down. And uh, for most purposes, that's probably uh, not what you want. So uh, we need to change a couple settings to get that uh, fixed. So first things first, um, let's click on our spine right click on the spine go to reverse sequence alright so now you're gonna see the text jump over here we're gonna click back on our spine wrap and we're gonna scroll down till we see the rotation box and under banking we're gonna change that number from 0 to 180 so now the text is um, facing the correct direction and it is upright and uh, whenever we scrub through here on the offset it uh, it's facing the right direction now say you wanted this to face the inside all you'd have to do is go to the axis here and change that from plus X to minus X and now it's facing the opposite direction but for right now I'm just gonna leave it at plus X and real quick if you wanted to animate this all you'd have to do is let's start on frame 0 command or control left click on the offset to create a keyframe We'll go to frame 70 and we'll just drag the offset over to 80% command or control left click to create another keyframe. So if we start this from the beginning, our text is now animated along that spline. Um, so that is that. Um, now um, if you look down here, we got size, we have rotation and the spline. Um, options if we go to size for example and we just click this little dot here and drag it down you're gonna notice our text gets kinda of squished down and creates um, an interesting look um, so that's just one thing you can play with uh, there um, you could also do it to this end as well you could squish that down um, if you wanted to create another another point on this graph you could just hit control and left click and that'll create a point and you can manipulate it even further um, so I could do something like that and then these lines here just basically um, are used to smooth out the curves in the graph so we could do something pretty wacky uh, like so uh, the to and from here basically just squish it uh, together and stretch it out so um, you know it's all up to you guys what you want to do um, uh, as with most stuff we do in Cinema 4D, there's no set or right way to do something. You know, it's just all on personal preference and what project you're doing and so forth. So uh, that's pretty much that, guys. Um, that is how you spine wrap. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, leave those down in the comments section. Um, and there's one thing I'd like to talk about real quick before I end this tutorial. Is uh, say right now, if we just go ahead and render this, you're only going to see the text. Uh, if you wanted to see the spline, all you'd have to do is take the spline and go up to, um, let's see, let's go to the spline tool, let's go to circle, we're just going to change that from XY to XZ, or XZ, and we're just going to change the radius, pull that down a little bit to about 10, and then we're going to go up to the hyper nerves icon and go to sweep nerves and then drag and drop the circle make that a child of the sweep nerves and then make the spline a child of the sweep nerves make sure your circle is on top of the spline though or else you're going to get something wacky like that so put the circle on top of the spline and if we just change that change the plane back to xy uh, you can see now that the now the spline has geometry to it so you can actually see the spine now um, 
and you know from here we could even animate um, not in rotation but we could even animate this line so if I wanted to start it right here on the end growth commander control left click to create a keyframe and then let's say frame 60 so it's a little bit ahead we just put that at a hundred percent let's see what this looks like so there it, it kinda looks like as our text is going along the spline the spline is actually being drawn behind it as you can see there so if we go ahead and give this quick render you can see that the spline is appearing behind it um, you could even play with the start growth so you could have it trail off as it goes by so if I just hit um, say start growth 25 frame 25 whoops I keep hitting the space bar at 0% and then at frame 85 it's gone with this command or control left click to create a keyframe and if we play this you can see that now that the spline actually it's like the text traces the spline and then the spline trails off beyond the text which is uh, kinda interesting um, so yeah guys that's a few uh, simple things um, that you can do to create some nice animations and uh, hopefully there's a few of you out there that were wondering how to do this and I answered your questions I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, if you did, please give it a like. Comment with any questions, suggestions, or anything uh, you think I may have missed. Uh, I'll be glad to help you guys. Um, so anyways, uh, thank you for taking the time to watch this if you made it this far. Uh, thanks for 10,000 subscribers once again. And I will see you guys in another tutorial. Alright, peace out.